What's up, Average Angler? Sean here, the Average Angler, I might add. <clears throat> Thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about where do the fish go in winter and, and how do we fish for them? Now, of course, there's, there's no hard and steadfast rule. Uh, and every body of water can be different. Uh, here locally where I live, we have the California Delta, which is a tidal body of water. It's not real deep, <clears throat> uh, and that's kind of going to be an outlier. It's much different than maybe a lot of uh, standard places. We are going to talk more with a, a reservoir, uh, in particular Lake Berryessa. It's a very popular lake around here. Some people catch them well. Some people get really frustrated by it, so I thought we'd touch on some things there. Uh, Another outlier would be Clear Lake, although it's going to follow the pattern fairly well to Lake Berryessa. Now, the quick answer, but really somewhat vague, and I wouldn't hold it to every fish in the lake, is that it's going to go where the food goes. <clears throat> Another general rule would be... Uh, Bass tend to live where they live in the summer. Now, to a point, that's true in the aspect of the fish that are going to get offshore and go deeper. Um, as the water gets cooler, and, and right now, Barry yeah, so when I was there two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, was, was about 57, 58 degrees. So everything's still pretty lively and moving around. The schools are still up uh, of bait. Um, there's some schools down, but the majority of the bait's up pretty high in the water column not overly deep yet it's around points it's around bluff walls it's it's in mouths of creeks it's all over the place what we'll see as the water temperature drops more is that bait will will disappear it it's going to move out either back up in creeks and get trapped in there by the bass uh and trout and whatever else is going to eat them okay there's a lot of a lot of species in in most of our lakes so it's not just the bass but the bass will keep them pinned back in creeks the other places they're going to go is out offshore. I mean, way offshore on Berryessa. They'll get way out on the creek edges. If you look at the main river channel that runs down through Berryessa, man, they'll end up way, way out offshore. Uh, when they do that, those fish really become spoonfish for the most part, um, jigging spoons. Uh, guys that are on that are comfortable with it. It is very effective, puts together some really good bags. I'm not real big on the spoon thing yet. It's just a confidence thing. I've been trying every time I go out, I have a spoon tied on and I look for that stuff. Uh, it, I just don't think it's cold enough yet. My trigger number on Barry Essa for several things is 52 degrees. So before we get too far off track, let's talk shallow fish first, okay? Because there's always going to be shallow fish. Uh, and we'll say shallow is 15 feet or less. You'll always have shallow fish. Are the num Probably not the numbers of the fish that are going to move out and stay on the bait. But the shallow fish will still be there. There's going to be better days than others to catch those. Uh, typically, on a stormy day, wind, rain, uh, don't have to have rain, overcast, uh, stormy days are generally best. Good time to lock a spinnerbait in your hand, okay? Berryessa is notorious for it. The fish will move up. The water surface is broken up with the chop from the wind. And they can get really, really aggressive. And they're up there for one reason and one reason only, and that's to feed. Uh, the other way when it's not so stormy or windy would be speed cranking. Uh, for the shallower fish speed cranking, I really like the I'm a pin jack. Uh, it has produced numerous fish over eight pounds on, on Barry S in the winter. It covers water really well. It casts really well. It'll cast really well into the wind. It's a very, it's a very small yet heavy bait. Um, so it casts real, real well. It's really easy to reel, and quite honestly, chunk it out, chunk, <laughs> chuck it out, and wind. Uh, 
break up your cadence just like your speed cranking if you watch tactical bass and they talk a lot about speed cranking do the same thing the pin jack's not necessarily a bottom bouncing bait um, just chunk and wind chunk and wind it, it casts so well like i said it's a great way to cover water and when you're fishing shallow speed cranking it's about covering water um, for this method i really like bluff walls where the fish can move up and down okay you're just trying to intercept one that's moved up to feed um, the other option is to slow way down the problem with that is you can't cover water um, jigs fish shallow can be effective uh, typically when you're dealing with largemouth you're talking slow though uh, so you're going to be more target oriented and let's talk about targets if you have wood hard structure for the fish to hold on those are those are high percentage spots in the winter time just like they are the summertime but more so in the winter perhaps the fish like to just move up and down so even if they're shallower in that 15 feet or less, they still like to have some hard cover to just move up and down. Not necessarily have to swim 50 yards over there to go to. And I have caught big fish out of two foot of water in the middle of winter uh, when it's 20 something degrees outside. Uh, it doesn't run them off. Barry yes, it doesn't get overly cold uh, as far as the water temperature goes. Uh, so you can get them that way. Uh, that particular one came on a, a Yamamoto cuttail worm first thing in the morning, um, uh, thrown on the edge of a tree you know, that was on a point, a hard structure and a hard, in a high percentage area. All right. So the majority of the fish are going to go deeper mainly because the bait goes deeper. They'll follow the migration of the bait, backs into creeks out onto the main lake, but it's gonna go deeper. As the water gets colder, the bait can't handle it, okay? The shad can't handle it. Oftentimes we have die-offs uh, because of the cold. Uh, so the fish will move deeper. On Berryessa, the water temperatures generally don't get near as cold. It's rare that I see it hit the 40s. Um, 52 degrees seems to be a big trigger point for me where the bite really turns back on. Until then, it can be a little up and down, okay? There will be some good days. There will be some bad days. Uh, I shouldn't say bad. Tough days, okay, where they're not as aggressive. Uh, for the deeper fish, and the tricky thing is the spotted bass... There's some big spotted bass in Berryessa. My biggest is 682. It was caught in a tournament. Got me some big fish money. Uh, that fish was right on the bank, but I've caught plenty of bigger ones deep. And the interesting thing is in the winter, the, the spotted bass literally will lay in the mud. Uh, because of this, I like clay style banks. They heat up a little faster, I think. They're also good for crawdads um, to burrow in and out. Uh, so they tend to be good places. The interesting thing is whether you have live sonar, 2D, side imaging, down imaging, a lot of times you can't see them. Um, if they're laying on the bottom, they can be very tough to separate and see on your graph. Now, one thing that I've really run into a lot on Barry S and I, I can't believe I'm giving this out. Uh, I fish 50 foot a lot. Um, and I'll get on these, these mud bank areas where there's some rock kind of mixed in, uh, not a lot of rock. This can be off the sides of points. It can be on bluff walls where it flattens out. Uh, and I will just drag a heavy shaky head with a baby brush on. And I don't do anything to it. I just drag it. I don't, I did this one day just out of frustration on a really tough day and not getting bit <clears throat> and lo and behold it didn't take long before i got bit and it was a good one it was like a three and three quarter pound spot what happened when i caught that fish was a whole group lifted off the bottom and all of a sudden now they're fired up 
Uh, at that point, it was just drop down and catch them. Drop down, catch them. It was the easiest thing in the world. The hardest thing to do was to get that first fish bite. After that, we were able to run around and, and duplicate it over and over and over in similar type spots. These spots were in particular sort of holes, if you will. Kind of, if you could find somewhere that was kind of semi-protected around it, like a wall kind of. But several of them we found were off of points, like on the side of points. On one side of the point, you would find that, this hole. And it didn't look like much until you got bit. And then it's like, you know, all of a sudden you got 20 to 30 fish lift off the bottom, and now you can see them. Um, it does shut down. You probably catch, I don't know, they're all different. You, depending on how big the school is, you can catch 7 to 15 fish before they'll shut off. Then you have to run to another one. That's how I like to fish for them, honestly. Because when you get them going, it, it's it's easy. Um, and then you just figure out what type of stuff they're on, look around at the spot you just got them going on, and then run around and, and duplicate it. The other one that you can cover a little more water with is I really like fishing the A-Rig deep. I like to find guts, uh, small coves that might be... Nah, 35 to 45 foot deep and I like to make a long cast of that a rig let it swim all the way to the bottom and then just slow reel just slow reel keep it keep it along the bottom it's another way to get them to lift off the bottom I found that works better usually when I can see some fish movement going on uh, but it will work uh, as well for pulling them off when they're laying in the mud I don't generally go back into the long creeks, the big creeks, um, where they always say the shad migrates to the backs of creeks. That may be the case on a lot of creeks with current, perhaps. Berryessa typically doesn't have current this time of year. Uh, it will once it starts raining more. We just aren't there yet. Um, hopefully we get some rain. Uh, the talk is heavy rain, right? But we haven't seen it. <clears throat> I typically stay out on the main lake. I love main lake fishing. I just feel like the bigger population of fish lives on the main lake. And I feel like bigger fish live on the main lake. On average, okay? So, for the deeper fish, where to fish? Bluff walls, as mentioned, okay? If you're a bank angler... My suggestion is to fish points, but fish off the sides of them. One side's typically deeper than the other, uh, might have harder breaks. The other thing to do, boat angler or bank angler, is to fish uphill. I love fishing uphill this time of year. Post front conditions uh, seems to be the highlight for me, fishing uphill. I typically will do that with either that heavy shaky head with the baby brush hog on it or uh, the other method I like is just a three quarter ounce jig. Uh, stay in bottom contact, uh, you're fishing slow but it's a direction that they're not used to seeing quite as much and I'm not really sure why other than that. Uh, but it works. And some days it works really, really well, and that's the way to do it. So there, oh, almost forgot. One more for the shallow guy. And live scoper. The rip bait, we all know the rip bait year round, right? Um, can always pick off some of those, those suspended fish and on Berryessa, Bigger fish will tend to suspend out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, if you get a cove, they might be three feet under the surface to 10 feet under the surface, out in the middle of the cove, suspended over 120 feet. Honestly, I think that's where they live. 
they just hang out up there and this time of year when the trout start getting up ah, here comes lunch right all right well thanks for watching like and subscribe we will be out on the water this weekend so we'll be putting some content together and we'll be doing some of these techniques we talked about um i am going to go fish the north end of the lake look for something a little different um try and target largemouth and uh we'll be sharing that with you all right so you'll see some of this stuff put to use thanks for watching have a great day